Would you pay to drive in the busiest parts of Toronto if it meant less traffic in less than two years? New York City is going to roll out congestion pricing, which means you're going to pay to drive in the heart of the Big Apple. London, England was one of the first global cities to roll out tolls there. Though here at home in Toronto, there's several urban planners that say when it comes to creative ways to get Toronto moving, this city is still stuck in neutral. Traversing Toronto can be an exercise in patience. Traffic is the worst. I listen to music, so it doesn't bother me as much. That helps you get through it. it helps me get through it. What do you think? I'm happy? <laughs> no, for sure, it's, it's, it's too much. When it comes to public support, the polarizing prospect of paying to drive in the downtown core has been floated by Toronto planners. Our previous city council even voted in favour of tolls on the Gardner and the DVP as a way to pay for expensive roadway infrastructure and transit, only to have the provincial Liberals cancel it during a turbulent, failed re-election bid. The current Conservative government doesn't appear to be interested either, according to Mayor Tory. We were going to use the money from that uh, to uh, help build transit, and of course the pricing itself would have uh, contributed to traffic management. Uh, we've received uh, nothing but signals indicating that that decision about road tolls is not likely to be changed at Queen's Park because they said no to the City Council in that case and to the City of Toronto. In 2017, Doug Ford told the Toronto Sun there have been people talking about a congestion charge for a long time. All of it is insane. Multiple city planners who spoke with City News believe congestion pricing could be one of the few ways to ease traffic congestion, cut pollution, and get more people out of their cars and onto public transit. Road charging is deeply political. It used to be seen as the third rail of uh, municipal politics, that you touch road charging and you get a shock. We're now starting to see that there's, uh, that there's a broader conversation. London, England rolled out tolls in the core of that city in 2003 and saw congestion drop by 10%. Singapore has experienced a 28% increase in transit ridership. They've also used the money collected to expand and modernize their transit system. Former city planner with the City of Toronto, Jennifer Keysmat, says tolls have a proven track record when rolled out along with transit expansion. London, England is the perfect example where a significant number of buses were added overnight. That was the carrot. And the stick was adding a price on roads. And that carrot and stick approach completely flipped the way people moved and the choices people made about getting around London, England. Our system currently is squeezed, but they're making big investments to increase capacity. And I think that as we go forward, there now is the ability to, to put the road charges in and have the capacity in the network so that people have other alternatives. In New York, that city hopes to raise about $1 billion a year by charging drivers of regular size vehicles about $15 a day during peak hours and larger trucks even more. Planners are quick to point out that you're being taxed to drive on our roads even if you're not using them today. Roads are not free. The money is coming from somewhere. They're coming from, it's coming from your property taxes. It's coming from parking charges. But it is not free. And I think there's an opportunity to put user fees so that the people who are using those roads can pay for a portion of uh, that direct cost. Now, political strategists believe that Mayor Tory had the majority of support here in Toronto when it came to charging people to use the DVP and the Gardner, though he did not have the support of residents and municipalities outside of the city. Either way, without the support of Queen's Park, the idea is likely to remain in park.